Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Going to do a short uh, recap of the techniques and baits that I used um, in the last Bass Junkies tournament at Bartlett. If you guys haven't seen that video, we'll put it up here in the top of the screen uh, for you to go back and watch. Uh, we ended up in second place, me and Laren there, had a great time. Uh, we were out um, using our forward-facing sonar for the most part uh, to catch those fish. And I just wanted to take a minute to um, explain some of those baits and techniques that we were using um, to make that possible. Um, fishing's been a little bit fickle on Bartlett um, as lately. A lot of fluctuating uh, water levels. The water's dirtier than usual. And... The fishing's just been a little bit challenging for some, but there's still plenty of fish to be caught there. Uh, we had a, I had a pretty fun practice and uh, tournament day, and I just want to sh uh, share with you guys what we did there to make that possible. So let's dive right in. For the most part, um, I was throwing a small swim bait and um, small jig head with uh, small uh, shad imitating baits on them. And uh, whether you want to call it uh, hover strolling or bottom strolling, mid strolling, whatever you want to call it, all the above, uh, that's what we were doing. So um, using our forward facing electronics to capitalize on those suspended fish out there on bait, basically in the middle of nowhere. Um, love it or hate it, the technology's here at the moment. And while it's uh, legal to use, we're going to use it to our advantage. Um, it is, it is fun. Crappie fishing with forward facing sonar has really helped me to kind of hone in that game. Um, and ha I've had a great time, um, learning something new. Um, not, it, not the most exciting thing in the world to watch all the time, but we do have, um, we do have fun doing it. Um, and let's go ahead and go through the baits. So, First and foremost, we were using the, if you can see that, the six cents, that's the six cents uh, line through treble head. Um, you take that treble head, you go ahead and run your line through it, you attach your swim bait to the spring lock uh, keeper on the back, and um, attach whatever swim bait, whatever size head you want. They make it in a few different sizes. This is the uh, quarter ounce, I believe. This is a little eighth ounce head, um, but they make different sizes for fishing all different depths of the water column. Um, I paired that with the uh, 2.8 inch uh, swing impact fat. This is the chartreuse pearl back. Um, and you can actually see that bait that's missing there. Um, one bait, two days of fishing, multiple fish, um, talk about a great money saving and, um, time saving technique to where that bait didn't just get constantly, um, mangled because when you hook those fish, it would actually pull away from the swim bait and that fish would, wouldn't have any leverage from the swim bait and it just really, um, help preserve that soft plastics. So I was using with that small, small swim bait, I was using a small size eight uh, Hayabusa, their standard treble hook. It still has that, uh, that coating on it. Um, I don't know what they call their coating, but it is, they call it the NRB coat, but it's that kind of grayish slick finish, super sharp, um, tiny hook, so it didn't overpower that swim bait but um, caught some key fish on that bait. That was a great bait for us. Uh, next, we were throwing the Six Sense Finesse um, swim bait head. You can see this 90 degree line tie on these is, is crucial. Um, that, was the other, that was the other bait that we were using and we paired this with a couple different soft plastics. Um, the, the two baits that worked best for us these two days were, was the Missile Baits Spunk Shad. That's the three and a half inch there. And the, um, Rapala Crush City Freeloader. 
Um, it seemed like in practice that they preferred the spunk shad um, and then in the tournament they preferred the freeloader. Um, th this bait was just a little bit darker and we had a little bit heavier clouds on the day of the tournament but that's why we have lots of baits we played with them kind of see what the fish preferred um, but let me go over my box here and I'll kind of show you all these baits that uh, that I have so as those conditions change you can change with those fish all right here we so, go so I got my heads and that you see an eighth ounce one out hook eighth ounce two out hook three sixteenths um, one out hook three sixteenths two out hook um, over here the other extremely popular head has been this duo realis um, bay rough head Hopefully you guys can see that there. Let me show you. It's got the, it's got the wings on it. Um, anyways, but that's been extremely popular. Um, Shane Ager, who won the tournament, that's actually the head that he was throwing, um, and so that's uh, that's another great option. Um, another bait you have is the depths. Uh, Sakamata Shad, you can see those same, hopefully you guys can see that, those same little fins there um, on that. And what those do is as you're working that bait through the water column, it causes that bait to jump side to side, kind of like you're walking the dog underwater. Very unique action that the fish haven't seen very much. Um, so I got some uh, Berkeley Power Bait power switches here. Um, there's the freeloader Sakamata Shad, my um, Missile Baits Spunk Shads, got the Miki Armor Shads in the, that's the 3 inch, and if the bite gets really finicky, the 2.5 inch. Um, another really popular bait for this technique is the Yamamoto Shad Shaped Worm, got those there. Um, the fish arrow, that's a very realistic profile bait. Um, that's another great option. Um, and some of the other ones that I don't have in my box, just because I simply have too many and they won't all fit, <clears throat> is the Sixth Sense, um, the Jungle Minnow. And that is, that. that's an awesome bait that, uh, I do a lot of hover strolling with and also um, mid strolling with the with the jig heads but that's 4k shads great color um, this is a sneaky color right here that is the they call it oh wrong one that's the morning dawn it's very similar to that it is the rose minnow so hopefully you guys can see that the rose minnow that is in clear water that's that's money um, but as you can see I got lots of lots of the jungle minnows another great one is that Berkeley power minnow in the um, four inch they make all these in different sizes so you can match the hatch um, two and a half threes fours fives um, so just basically just whatever the bait size is just try to match the hatch um, but as far as the baits go, that's pretty much it. There are a lot of other baits. This technique is really adaptive. Um, you can use a ball, just a regular old ball head, head jig, um, whatever, whatever you have um, handy. But as far as the equipment goes, um, I like a little bit longer, something over seven foot finesse um, spinning rod. It's, uh, it's a little bit easier to shake that bait. So when we were fishing, the fish were actually in the very top of the water column like all the active fish that are actively feeding on those shad seem to be 
eight foot and shallower. Even though our boat may be sitting in 25, 30, 35 feet of water, it seemed like those actively feeding fish were in that very top of the water column. So that's why we we're using those lighter heads, that eighth ounce and that 3 16 ounce head, because as you'd cast it out there, you wanted it to stay in that top of the water column. And as you shook your rod tip, it would, you know, it caused that bait to roll back and forth. That's the importance of that 90 degree line tie and it caused that bait to bounce back and forth as you bring it through the water column so as we had marked these fish we would make you know as precise of a cast as we could using that forward facing sonar precise casts and try to get it right in front of that fish or just past it and bring it past that fish try not to spook those fish um, we made hundreds and hundreds of casts to hundreds of marks to catch these fish. Um, maybe not all of them were bass, but a lot of them that we saw actively feeding, we do feel like they were bass. That doesn't mean you're, just because you have the technology and you're casting right to those fish, doesn't mean you can make them bite. Um, you still have to make a perfect presentation. You still have to figure out these little nuances kind of for each day, whether it's a bait change, whether it's how they want the bait worked. Um, but as you figure those things out, you can definitely really start to be kind of dialed in for this style of fishing. Now, with that, <clears throat> with that swim bait, that was great at just making random casts. As one guy was using that forward facing, with that swim bait, we could randomly cast and pick up an extra fish or two. Our second biggest fish of the day, I actually caught while Aaron was targeting specific fish that he was casting to. I was just kind of casting around on the outskirts of where he was scoping, and I caught our second biggest fish on that swim bait, on that... Uh, that Kitech that uh, that morning and so that's a great kind of search bait you don't have to have forward-facing electronics to go out and do this you just can idle find the shad and and make some random casts is it is it beneficial to actually pinpoint those individual fish of course it is but it can be done without it um, and that swim bait like I said was great for covering water and great for covering water at all different depths even though this particular day that for us they seem to want it high in the water column that's not always the case sometimes it's the mid water column sometimes it's sometimes that shad is pushed down and they want it deep in the water column and so day to day you just have to figure those little nuances out but this is some of the gear and some of the tackle that we use um, when we're using our forward facing sonar we couldn't get them to bite an a-rig we couldn't get them to bite a jerk bait we couldn't get them to bite other traditional forward facing tactics so um, this strolling really seemed to be what they were keyed in on and i appreciate you guys watching and we'll talk to you next time if you have any comments um, please comment below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Um, I'm going to put a description of all these baits down in the, in the description so it's easy for you to just link straight over to them. Don't forget to use the code CRESTON10 at Copper State Tackle, guys. They're going to take care of you. All these baits I have discussed today, they have. So you can go there. We'll link them in the description. You can go there, use that discount code, pick them up, get out there and catch some of these finicky fish this winter while the getting's good. Thank you and have a good day.